836 have a large tornado on the ground. Get on up the hill here and we'll pull over. Go on up a little bit more and get a little bit more contrast on it. Tom, it's your first tornado. What do you think? Massive! Cool! Groovy! Find the police in the town of here. Why don't we just stop right here? Stop right here. Let's shoot it. is only about a mile away now. It's pretty wild. Come on, Tig! Come now. Here comes the dot. So we get a bit of speed limit. Yeah, it makes you go into speed limit. That's a photo. That's a photo. That's a photo. That is cool. Warren's forecasting pays off. That is wild. Lightning. Did you see that? Lightning in the funnel, around the funnel. One of the greatest moments for me as a chaser was when I got to the point where my forecast started paying off, where I could put on paper uh, a forecast using all this meteorological data and actually pinpoint an area where tornadoes were going to form. And I remember the first time I did that was Laverne, Oklahoma, where I actually got it down to about a 50, maybe 100 square mile area, and a tornado actually occurred there. So it's a great feeling to know that you've educated yourself and you've gained the experience where you can be confident enough to forecast tornadoes in a, in a, in a very small target area. Right the wedge. I think my best advice for anyone that wants to chase storms is to learn about the storms first. Learn about the dangers of weather, learn about the mechanics of severe weather, and a lot of people that do this will not want to chase. They'll realize that it's a lot of hard work and it's not always seeing tornadoes and, and lightning every day. Uh, which you don't usually see. There's 